This past weekend, I was in Raleigh with my parents at their storage facility. They recently moved from Michigan to North Carolina, and alongside downsizing from a 4,000 square foot home to a 1,500 square foot condo comes not one, not two, but three storage units full of crap that you will not remember you have until you go back and visit it. Um, and in one of the storage units, I saw my old dresser from my childhood bedroom. I opened up the drawer and I saw the scarf that I had knit for my great grandmother years ago. Um, my mom told me that she was sick and I wanted to keep her warm in the hospital. So um, I knit the scarf for her and it reminded me of the day that we went to go see her. It was a really hot and humid Houston day. And if anyone's been in Houston on a hot humid day, you know what that feels like. My mom insisted that my sisters and I all wear our fanciest church dresses. Even though a hospital is a really strange place for a church, um, she made me put on this goopy, sticky lip gloss that made my hair stick to my face whenever the wind was blowing in the wrong direction. And I hated that lip gloss so much. But I was still excited to go see her. I was excited because I knit her the scarf. I went to this really bougie store in downtown Birmingham in Michigan and picked out the softest, most blue yarn I could find. I was excited because I shared her name. My middle name is Conchetta, which is Italian for Tina, and that's her first name. And I was also really excited because I felt like I knew the most about hospitals out of anyone who was going there. I had been going to Children's Hospital in Chicago for as long as I could remember for my checkups to make sure the neuroblastoma wasn't there anymore. And so I thought I knew this place. And when I walked in, all of my presuppositions about what a hospital was flew out the window. The floors and walls, which I remember being so brightly colored, were instead a uniform cream white that made me dizzy. And the nurses, instead of having a Mickey Mouse uh, mask on, were wearing really drab scrubs. So I followed my parents through the hospital, past the reception desk, and past the gift shop to my great-grandmother's hospital room. And my mom asked me, Sir Beth, do you want to say hi? Sure. I stepped up to her bed and looked at her for a moment, only watching. I watched her chest move up and down ever so slightly, like a petal fluttering in the wind. And I said, hi, searching for some recollection in her eyes. And all of a sudden, it was as if my sensations just became too much. I couldn't stop focusing on the room divider that was a really thick plastic covering with some gaudy flowers on it. I could smell her disintegrating skin, and alongside the smell of the bleach from the soap that was bleaching my nostrils, it just became too much. I ran out of the room under the guise of needing to use the restroom, not knowing that my younger sister followed behind me. And I fell onto the floor, beginning to cry, not realizing that I had forgotten to breathe for the last couple minutes. And my younger sister held me as only a child can hold someone imitating a mother. At her funeral, my grandmother asked me if I wanted to bury the scarf with my grandmother, and I instinctively said no. Who was this corpse? How could this body in a box steal the thing that held her scent? I kept it with me and put it in that drawer. Ten years later, my grandfather came to visit my family in Michigan. He played in a bluegrass band. And he always carried his guitar with him everywhere he went, even to Ireland on a trip with his wife. Um, he would play us songs like Rocky Top, Clementine, Don't Let Smoky Mountain Smoke It Up In Your Eyes. And I don't know if it was because he hadn't seen us in a while, he hadn't come to Michigan to visit for five years or so, or because the song sounded especially beautiful that day. But I knew I needed to record those songs. So we spent that afternoon singing and recording, him on the melody, me on the harmony. I cringed every time I hit a flat note, but I kept singing. <laughs> and I recorded it on the computer, closed it, kind of forgot about it, until a year later. I found myself in Freiburg, Germany, doing an eight-week language intensive course. And shortly before I left to go there, my parents told me that my grandfather was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And I almost didn't go for that reason, but they insisted I go knowing that's what he would have wanted me to do. At 1 a.m. one night, I got a call from, from an unknown number, which was really strange because no one called me on my German phone. <laughs> um, 
um, I picked up, it was my aunt. She was in Houston with my grandpa. Sarah Beth, do you want to say hi? Of course. Hi, I said. And at that point, I realized this wasn't going to be a two-sided conversation. So I, ju I just talked to him. Um, I talked about my time in Germany, how I was having to learn this really funky, just wavish dialect that I've spoken in the southwestern region. Talked about um, how it was really similar to his time when he had to learn Russian when he worked at NASA in the 80s. I talked about my favorite park that I used to walk by every day home from class where people watched while eating a donor or something like that. Um, and I just talked and I talked and I talked until my aunt came back on the line and said, okay, you have to say goodbye. And I didn't know what to say. So all I could say was, I love you. Thank you so much. I love you. He died the next day. And at first I was angry. I was mad that I had believed my dad's well-intentioned words when he said, we beat your cancer and we're going to beat his. Because I knew going into it that an 18-month-old neuroblastoma was a completely different ball game than a 75-year-old with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. And yet I let myself believe that. I was mad that I believed that and I was mad that I didn't call him more often because there was so much that I wanted to learn. That afternoon, I was walking home from class, as I did every day, and I stopped in my favorite park. And instead of people watching, I laid down in the grass, and I put in my headphones. And I began to listen to the music that we recorded that last summer over and over again for what seemed like an eternity. And I listened until I felt a sense of peace. And while my parents were in Houston, Houston dealing with all the details of what is an unexpected family reunion, I was able to have my own personal memorial service by myself. I still mourn the loss of those who have left my life, whether that be family, friends, ex-lovers. But I no longer feel the need to run out of the hospital room. All I want now is to have more moments where I feel like I'm evolving with and surrounded by the people that I love. My sister still holds me from time to time, but I don't feel a need to search for my great grandmother's scent in her scarf when I pull it from the drawer. Because for once, having her name is enough. <laughs>